Hi everyone and welcome to episode 4 in our ability system series. In this episode I'm going to go through how to set up an interrupt for your casting. Now in a previous episode we set up the cast bar so that when we clicked on a spell in the action bar it displayed the cast bar for that spell and then triggered the spell effect. Okay. Um, so what we'll be doing in this episode is showing how moving the character can interrupt the cast of that spell. And likewise, you can also apply this to any abilities the enemies have that may interrupt you or anything else you want to interrupt the player from casting, maybe a, a, a cutscene or something. You want to interrupt any casting happening. Well, it, this will work for that too. So to start off with, we need to go to our player character and set up on here the ability for us to interrupt any sort of casting. So on a third person character, on your event dispatches, we're going to add a new event dispatcher. And we call this one interrupt cast. I'll do interrupt casting. And we're going to call this event uh, dispatcher uh, so that anything listening to it will then react accordingly. So first of all, let's set up that when it, this thing is being called. So on the movement input for move forward and move right, you notice we have these axis values. Well, we can use these to determine whether or not we're actually pushing any keys. Now to do that, uh, rather than drag in load of lines about, uh, which we could do, actually, could we do that? Yeah, we'll, we'll just go down here, we'll just use it like so. It's not, there's quite still some space there, so that's totally fine. And what we're gonna do in here is gonna go is not equal, and you'll choose not equal float. Okay, and likewise for this one, not equal float. So both of these have to be not equal to zero. So zero means there's no input being in entered, and it will either be one or minus one on a keyboard based on whether or not you're pushing one of W, A, S, and D keys. If you're doing this on a gamepad, please take note that you won't need to use these ones. Instead, you'll need to use the nearly equal here and turn this into a not gate. So you just not it at the end. So not, for example. So you'd need to use this for gamepad stuff, okay? Because you need to determine the tolerance for the thumbsticks because there's always a little bit of give in the thumbsticks. So use that for gamepad stuff. But in this case, we're keeping it simple with just the keyboard input. So on here, either of these can be true for it to interrupt. So this will go into an OR gate. So OR Boolean, which means that either of these have to, can be true for it to be output true. And that will go into a branch. Okay. Now, on after the branch, we're going to drag our interrupt casting and choose call. And basically, the way the event dispatcher works, this basically shouts out, hey, I've interrupted my cast, and then anything we tell it to listen out for it will react however we decide to. So we're done here, we can close that. And now we're gonna add the effects of that cast. So, here I'm going to go into my cast bar and on my cast bar here we can go to the graph and we're going to first of all set up our player so we know we've got access to the player reference so on here I'm going to go begin play well not begin play event construct sorry event construct and on here we're going to get player character and we're going to plug that into a cast to third person character. Now, because we have this as a reference, we may want to save this reference for later use. So as third person character, it's a good idea just to promote that to a variable. And we can store that as player character. It's always good to store any casts you do. It saves a lot of time later on. So with this player character, we can now bind an event to interrupt casting. Okay, so what we're doing, as soon as this cast bar is created, we're telling it to prepare an event in case it hears the interrupt casting being shouted out. That's what essentially it's doing. So the event we want to trigger is one we set up in the last episode called interrupted cast. So from the event here, go create event. And from the drop down, the drop down box, select function and select the interrupted cast here. And click compile. On the interrupted cast function, this is when we're going to grab our ability. 
getability. And we're going to tell this thing to also interrupt its cast. We need to give that though the function to interrupt. So go find your ability parent. And you want to make sure you add a new function called interrupt cast. So new function interrupt cast. Back on your cast bar UI, you can now drag from the ability here and search for that interrupt cast function. Like so. And what we're going to do here temporarily is just tell this thing to hide. So we're going to set the visibility of this temporarily uh, to be hidden. Okay. Now, with that done, we can then go to the ability itself. And when it sees the interrupt cast, we're going to tell it to just destroy itself. Destroy actor. Hit compile. So it removes the ability from the world, so it isn't actually uh, flung out towards an enemy. So to test that this is working, on this ability here, I'm just going to do a print string, and we're going to do interrupt. Okay. So hopefully you followed all that along. So now when I push play, start casting and move, I get the interrupt get called. And there you go. And you see it disappears, like so. Now at the moment it's quite static. What would be quite nice is to add an animation, a bit of flair to the cast bar. So it sort of like shows the player like, by the way, bang, this was interrupted, you screwed up, try again later. So what I'm going to do is set up an animation on my cast bar. So you want to load up your uh, cast bar UI. Oh, pardon me. Uh, access. Ah, that's because this ability does not exist anymore. So on the interrupted cast here, we just want to check that ability is valid. So right click on ability and convert to validate get. You can't obviously interrupt the cast of a spell that isn't actually there. And click compile. So now that should stop that error arriving. Yeah, there you go. So as I said, we're going to do an animation on our cast bar. So I open up your cast bar UI, and in here we're going to create a new animation. So click plus animation, and we'll call this one interrupted. Cast. Oh, I just do interrupted. I've already got something already called interrupted cast. Click on interrupted, and on here we're going to tell it to fade out. So I'm going to click on my cast bar root, and go add track and choose cast bar root. Now on here, I can add a track for this and I'm gonna change the render opacity over time. So at the start, it's gonna be render opacity of one, but let's say after uh, one and a half seconds, we'll make it equal zero. Okay, so it goes from there to there. Brilliant. Next, we're going to make the uh, cast bar itself. We're going to go add track, cast bar. And on the cast bar, we're going to add a track to this as well. And I'm going to change the fill color and opacity. And at the start, we're going to change its color to a different value. And I'll change it to mostly red. So I'm going to put green at zero and blue at zero. And at red, we're going to increase up like so. May want to add a little bit to the other ones to make it a lighter red. And go for a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.1. There you go. And that will do nicely. Next, add another track for the cast bar and go percent. And we're going to set the percent, these are the starting frame by the way, set the percent here to be 1%, uh, percent, or 1, not 1%, one percent, 100 percent, but it is represented as a decimal as 1.0, so it appears like so. Um, 
I'm actually going to change the opacity of my bar here to 0.5. See what that looks like. Uh, don't know. We'll leave that as one. We'll leave that as is. Okay, with that done, we're then going to test that out. And that's how that looks when it's interrupted. And what we do is tell the text to change as well to say that it was interrupted. So let's go to the graph here. And where it says interrupted cast, we're going to get rid of set visibility and drag in your animation for interrupted. So in your animations, in your variable list, drag interrupted out, choose get and play animation. We're also going to tell the text change. So set text. And the text for this is going to say interrupted. You compile. Very nice. Okay. So let's see how that looks in game. Push play. And there it goes. Now you can see it was still growing the cast bar out. Okay. Uh, so we need to change that so it, it doesn't do that. So let's go to back to the cast bar. And go back to the graph. And go to the event graph. Now find the tick. Now the tick is continue doing this whilst it is still visible and casting. Uh, and uh, so it is visible and then it's at changing the percent over time based on the timer. So on the interrupted cast here, we're going to tell that timer to basically stop. We're going to go and clear and invalidate that timer by handle. And see how that looks. That's much better. Okay. So if I were to push the button again, Notice it stays hidden. Why is that? Well, the reason why is because the animation has reached the end, but remember it's turned it invisible, it's turned the opacity down to zero, and it hasn't really told it to return back to uh, a full amount. So, on the uh, cast bar, we need to change what happens to the animation when it's finished. In the graph, click on the interrupted, right click, and type in finished. And in there you'll find an event called animation finished in the brackets interrupted, the name of your animation. Choose that. And in here we're going to tell the visibility of this widget to be hidden. We're then going to have to tell it to reset back to its original color plus its original render opacity. Otherwise when we play it again, it's not going to show. It's still going to have that end result. So what I'm going to do, rather than adding a chain of things here, I can just go into design view, add an animation called reset, click on this, and add various tracks to reset everything back to its original colour. So for example, click on the cast bar, and we're going to add the colour and opacity of this to match the colour opacity that's here currently. So on here, we're going to just have a look what we've got here and leave them as is and leave it as just one frame. Next we're going to change is the render opacity. Now uninterrupted we change the render opacity on the cast bar root. So the reset do exactly the same. Cast bar root, new track and then add render opacity. Turn it back to one and leave it again as just one frame. We don't need to animate it, we just need to tell it to set certain values at the start. The last one is the percent here. We can do this if you want, it's totally up to you. It doesn't really matter because it's going to change anyway once you've got um, uh, a spell being cast. But let's just do it just for completion's sake. So on the cast bar, new track, percent, and we're going to change that value to zero. And hit compile. Now to add that reset to your uh, event graph, go to your start cast. And at the start of this, we're going to tell it to play that reset animation. So drag reset out, choose get, and tell it to play animation. If I call this in, 
like so. And then let's test this out. So I start casting, I move, it interrupts and fades out. And when I go play it again, it's as if it never happened. And there you go. And that is how you do an interrupt. So if you ever want something to interrupt the player, all that would be is telling the player to interrupt. They call their interrupt uh, event. So you just get player character, cast the player character, and then call interrupt cast. That's all you have to do if you want the enemy, for example, to interrupt the player, or a cutscene, or anything really. Okay? And that will do it for this episode. Hopefully you've learned something out of this and uh, are enjoying it. If you have any suggestions for future content you'd like to see on the channel, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, join our family of subscribers. If you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where simply a donation of $1 will get you access to the next episodes in this series, plus many other episodes in many other series too, along with some exclusive benefits just for my patrons. So thank you very much for all my supporters so far on Patreon. Uh, you guys are amazing, and uh, I'm so uh, privileged to have you as supporters. So thank you once again for your support. Anyway, that'll do it for me, guys. So I'll see you in the next episode. And in the next episode, we'll start working on getting that spell working for the fireball. Thanks very much, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.